Hello and welcome to Illumination Podcast with Nick and Kisma. I'm Kisma, and on today's show, we're going to talk about the dilemma of multitasking. Hello and welcome to Illumination Podcast with Nick and Kisma, bringing you ancient wisdom for modern day success so that you can have the mindset to get your life and business set. As always, thank you for tuning in. And if you're new to the podcast, take a quick second to hit the subscribe button in iTunes, SoundCloud, or Stitcher. Uh, If you want to get the inside info for this and every episode, as well as some free gifts, go to illuminationacademy.net forward slash podcasts. And now let's dive in to get your mindset for your life and business set. Well, hey, Nick, what's going on? Hey, Kizma. We are... In a new location. We're podcasting from our new office here in Carlsbad. Like, how fun is that? I'm not sure. I'm feeling You're a not little, sure if uh, it's fun? No, no, it's really fun. <laughs> um, but I'm having some anxiety because I'm not, sh- like, I'm not sure if we're ever going to hear the train of truth. Oh, you can hear? You haven't heard it here yet? But will it really come through? It's it not like buzzing not by come in the through. other office. Mm. Well, I'm sure there'll be podcasting moments at home too. But yeah, the train of truth comes by. It's just a little bit softer. Yeah. We might have to like... Remember the people who were the, who were like, "Oh, we thought it was a sound effect." <laughs> no, we won't right. do that. No, you don't think? No, we'll do, I don't think we'll do we that. We won't either. do that. Good. How's your yeah. week been? Uh, week's been um, really phenomenal. You've been on fire. I have. Yes. yes. Yeah, I've had a lot of things going on. Yeah, it's been a lot of like task oriented type of things mm. of um, you know building little things here and there, getting a lot of big bigger pieces up and running. Um, the energy ca- commu- uh, energy mastery community is we're building some really interesting things around that. We're doing mm-hmm. some monthly meditations. And I'm setting up a whole community support system for all of our graduates. So uh, lots of You've little You've been pieces. really in it. I've been in it. Is that why you forgot my hoodie when you came to the office today? That is exactly why. <laughs> and the scissors? Because you know, what happened was I finished working on, <laughs> um, we use ClickFunnels, you know, for anybody who doesn't know, like that's how we build. It's so that people like me can build websites. Um, and so I was working on my thing. And when I get into that kind of work, I like, I get like ultra focused. It's, mm-hmm. it's like when I was younger and I used to play video games, mm-hmm. it's like now the video game actually does something. So uh, it's, this is correct. The graphics There's aren't as result. cool, but mm-hmm. they're, you know, mm-hmm. it actually does something. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I got like really focused. And then I remembered your text and you're like, bring me a hoodie. Cause it's kind of chilly here. Mm-hmm. And then I just, I took, he shows up with a scarf. I took up the scarf is not a hoodie. Yeah, it's not <laughs> classic, but look at this like classic guy thing to do, like improvising. I looked in the back seat and when I pulled up and I was like, dang, I forgot to bring that hoodie. And I looked in the back seat and I was like, oh, that's a scarf. Like maybe that'll do. And then it did. My, it was fine. My hoodie's here. Like you can yeah, buy I know. my hoodie. I know. It's just, you know. Anyway. It's cool. So we're talking about multitasking. And isn't that a perfect segue? <laughs> I was not multitasking. I was ultra focused. I was probably a little over focused. Yeah, yeah. It's sort of the inverse of what we're talking about. And this is a cool topic because it was actually inspired by a post I had put on Facebook. And some of our listeners out there, thank you for chiming in and say, you should do a podcast episode on this. And we're like, yeah, I think we should. Yeah, it's a great topic. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to read the post. And I think that will encourage like the conversation, certainly between us and some feedback from all of you listening. But I posted, uh, I don't know, it was about a week ago, scattered energy will create scattered results. Not ideal, right? Yet look around. How many humans are texting and walking, talking and texting, starting and stopping? How tempting is it to look at someone else and blame them, shame them, or just moan and groan about them rather than stay focused on your own tasks and hand with a single pointed focus? We've been given this opportunity called life. Every moment of every day is precious and you are designed to ignite each of these moments with a spark of divinity, excellence, and mastery. Be the master, be committed. Avoid telling others to be a certain way or to do something if you're not willing to be and do it yourself. Peace out and rock on. Bam. I love your posts. Your posts inspire me, by the way. They're good posts, but it also inspired some other people to, to talk about that. So I would like to highlight first the part about how we're designed. 
Okay. Because we're let's just, start there. Yeah. yeah. I thought d- it was cool that you brought the drama aspect into it too. Mm-hmm. Um, but mm-hmm. let's start there. We are designed to be masters. Yes. We are designed in perfection. I mean, well, you know, we don't we don't teach from any particular religion, but we talk a lot about spirituality. And when you look at the original divine design of humans, we are created with the same essence and energy of whatever you want to call this unique ultimate energy, God, Brahman, universe, source, spirit. Yes. We're perfect. We're created in perfection. And it's interesting to me too, how many people will say, oh, I'm just, you know, I'm trying to be perfect. It's the perfection syndrome. Well, be perfect, but be imperfect as you get to be perfect. Well, yeah. I mean, you have to take action. You have to take and, action, uh, have to adjust. Sometimes it's up, it's down, it's all around. But being in that action in itself is a perfect way of being. It is. I mean, you have to be in, you have to be in, you know, an imperfect action, so to speak, of like just being willing to suck at something. Yeah. Um, to, so you get better at to, something. So you can get better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, the first time you picked up a flute, I'm sure it wasn't, you it was know, not good. phenomenal. I know that that the first time I picked up a trumpet, it was uh, right. loud and right. very unpleasant. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, staying in action first and foremost is, you know, prerequisite right. to even get started. Right. And other people get, they get paralyzed by the, right. the perfectionism, but that's a whole other topic. It's a whole other topic, but it just shows that we are capable of mastering our life. Like we're here to actually master our life. And I think what happens is that, people go to the external source and conversation rather than turning it inward to figure out, well, what's the next step of this self-mastery or this excellence or whatever it is I want to do. And it's easier sometimes to look at the outside world and blame or get distracted or multitask or do all these things. It's like getting caught in distractification. Distractification. Is that a word? It is now. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, that's really what's happening is like, I need to do some stuff. And instead of really doing the one thing that I know I need to do, I'm going to do these five other things that seem kind of important. And then it'll make me feel really busy. It'll make me feel busy. It'll take me off what is required to do, which might be slightly uncomfortable and it takes the person out of that result-oriented goal. It's an illusion of productivity. Oh, that's good. Is, You're on a roll today. It is really what it is. Distractification, illusion of productivity. <laughs> those, those are those are going to be our memes. I can't wait. Um, but I think it's important to recognize, you know, like how the human brain was designed as well. So multitasking, um, if anybody doesn't know this, I think I think I read this in The One Thing. Great, yeah, great book. Right, right. Uh, there's a section in there about multitasking, which really affirmed a lot of the things that I had learned about it through, you know, study of philosophy and meditation, things like that, where multitasking is a term that was meant for computers. And so even a computer, our, our awesome state-of-the-art newest computer does not multitask. So what it does is it flips back and forth between two uh, programs or being two tasks really, really, really fast. Super fast. So that's that's what they, and they call it, gives the illusion of multitasking where it appears to be doing two things at the same time, but it's actually not. Uh, and so the- Tricked us. So they used that term and then they applied it to human beings who are doing two things at the same time. Or three or four things. Or yeah, you know- add any number to that. <laughs> and, uh, and, and now, now it's basically like a human being trying to mimic a computer and we just don't work the exact same way in that way. Mm-hmm. So the human brain is the same way where you pretty much get to focus on one thing and that's it because you really moment to moment to moment, when you really slice it down to the moment, you have one moment of presence. Yeah. And so when people try to, switch back and forth really, really fast between different things. And consistently, you're constantly changing gears. Mm -hmm. And they've done lots of studies around this. And the studies have found that the people who are like, I'm awesome at multitasking, is is they're way less productive than people who suck at multitasking. Interesting. Well, let me ask you a question. Is it that we are switching back and forth? Or is it that we're doing, like I mentioned the text, the texting and the walking or... 
you know, the texting, the driving, God forbid, but is it sounds it's I feel like we're trying to do things at the same time. We're trying, but it's we're not really we're we're actually switching back and forth, mm. which is part of the challenge and burns a lot of energy. And you can like like you there's you can breathe and talk at the same time, exactly. right? Like you can breathe and walk. Like those are autonomous functions mm-hmm. that autonomous functions that are just happening in the background. It's basically right. like background, you right. know, background computing. Mm-hmm. So that is something that we can do. Like you can walk and chew gum and and you're not going to have too many problems, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. Right? I don't know. You never know. But you never know, right? But as far as like doing something more complex, that's why texting and driving is so incredibly dangerous. It's oh. so dangerous. Oh my gosh. It's that split second where someone just hangs on to the text too long. It And it really only, I mean, I know because I've wrecked multiple cars. Not even texting and driving, Dude, just back in the day before we, me that. we had the texting machines, is is I would just, it, every single time I did it, I'd rear end somebody and it was a split second. That person slammed on their brakes, my bumper went under theirs, cars totaled. And I mean, everybody's wonders, safe. This is like a five mile an hour Yeah, accident. but he wonders why I don't like how he drives. I have not gotten in one accident. I haven't killed us once. <laughs> Can you believe that? Don't say that. Um, no, I'm a safe driver. I'm a really safe driver. Anyway, that's how it works with uh, with multitasking, and that's why it's a problem. It will kill productivity. So, um, yeah, your next job interview or when you know how good are you at multitasking? You should feel free to tell them. You know what? I suck at it, and I intend to get worse. well. Maybe different words, but I like to be present <laughs> to the present moment and really focus on what I'm accomplishing. But here's the thing: it's like so if someone is really present to one moment, to doing one thing, will they then go to the next moment easier and more rapidly than if in their mind they're believing that they're getting more than one thing done? I'm not quite sure I understand your so question. So if someone's like, oh, I'm, I'm multitasking, I'm doing this, and in their mind they think they're getting a couple things done at once, rather than knowing, like really knowing, okay, right now I'm sending this text, then I'm going to finish this conversation or I'm going to do X, Y, and Z and be really focused and then quickly go to the next task. It's, you'll have an easier time, but this is problem. This is one of the reasons that it drains so much energy. And also one of the reasons that it actually kills success mm-hmm. is because you then get trained to not close loops. Okay, this is where I was so going. If training, you look at this energetically. You're training your brain to not complete things. And what happens to the brain when the brain doesn't have the opportunity to close an energetic loop? Well, that's the same thing. Now you've got a program that's running in the background. So it's as if someone has 100 tabs open on their computer. Right. And it gets really slow. And so when the brain of a human, the mind, the energy, the emotions keep opening up, opening up, opening up. Exactly. They start getting slow and distracted. Right, mm. right. So it's it's a really interesting thing that we've been trained into where we continue to do that. And it's like, it's almost like a badge of honor. Like, oh, I'm really good at multitasking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and But what it's actually doing is draining energy. It's killing productivity. And it's also training you out of completing things. Mm. So it's it, it actually creates more and more chaos and in your isn't life. Isn't this one of the issues? I mean, I know we speak with hundreds of people every month and talk about their biggest issues. And I think one of the things we see that prevents someone from success is not completing what they are on. Yeah. It's like even getting so close and not having that completion. I think this is a really important point. When you're speaking of the brain and the energetics, how the human is being trained, don't complete, don't complete, keep it open. Keep it open. Oh, it's like a virus in our operating system. It is. Yeah, it is. Mm. It's a bug. Um, But, you know, you think about it like in in the musician world, right? You could have, and I'm sure you ran into this too, the best musicians are so talented, they don't work because they can't show up to the gig on time. (sighs) Right. Oh, that is yeah. not completing. That's you know, it's not, not completing, completing a commitment. Right. You made a commitment right. and you didn't complete that commitment. Right. 
Um, I, you know, you see it in the business world where, you know, somebody's got like just a desk full of stuff and it's like all this stuff. It's, you know, people operate with different levels of, uh, disarray, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, like if you've got a bunch of stuff on your desk and it's just extremely messy and there's a whole bunch of undone things, that's going to be very exhausting Yes, and unproductive. Yes. And think about for yourself, like in your own day. When you have a day where you're sitting down and you got <laughs> focused work on this thing and you're like, I am doing this one thing. And then you've got the other days where it's like you're doing this and you're doing that and you're bouncing back and forth between this thing. Like which days are you more tired? Oh, bouncing back and forth. Without because, question. Yeah. What you described when you've got this one thing, as long as the human is really engaged in the one thing is a person's in flow. You know, we've talked about this before, but like the definition of flow is when you're focused on one thing that you're good at, but it is also challenging and it holds you to that present state. Right. And there's nothing like it. It's like this freedom and it's energizing. And, you know, it's a little bit like when Swami G talks about intense work as rest because the human is focused on the present moment. And as you know, y'all out there look for the energy around you, for the distraction to maybe point a finger at someone else or to just get energized by the external world or by, like Nick said earlier, this preconceived busyness or you think you're busy, but you're not. The illusion. The of illusion of productivity yeah, is like really get focused. And it might be, you have to train yourself. Maybe it's setting your timer for 15 minutes and really focusing on something. But as you build that like mile and sheath of being able to be present to the present moment, there's so much more energy behind it. Right. And what's interesting to note is that it's easy to focus on things that you're really interested in. Mm. So you can get absorbed in your favorite movie yeah. and just get lost in it, mm -hmm. right? And, and and you're very, very focused and that's cool. But now put yourself in front of a difficult task or a tedious uh, task. Yeah. And it's and now you're gonna know your true powers right. of concentration. Yes. So when you're in front of that difficult task, you wanna give yourself a fighting chance. Yes. You know, you, you turn off your notifications. Yes. So because if your phone's like beeping and blinking at you, you're done for. You get distracted. Yeah. It's like you know, the senses will, your sense organs will be pulled into that direction. Right. You know, and this, what brought this up for me is like, we're talking about opening the loops from ourselves in terms of attention to all these different things and elements or people, places, events, phones, computers. However, Nick, what about the elements coming in? So if someone has their computer open and they've got Skype, and they've got Facebook, and they've got email, yet they're wanting to work on something specific, read a book, or, or do something. <laughs> and those things are flashing at them. They're actually absorbing that energy, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you scroll on Facebook. I, I had to unfollow someone the other day because I there's just these weird photos of an injury that I just didn't want to see. And I was like, why do I want to see that? I don't... It, it, and it's a weird energy to absorb. Yeah. So yeah. we've got to understand it's not just opening our loops. It's like, what are all the loops that you're allowing into your realm? Right. And that'll just make it harder. Right. You know, it'll just make it that much harder mm -hmm. um, to really focus and to really concentrate to get that, that exactly. thing done. Now, that being said, you know, there's some nuances to this that I think would be kind of fun to talk about. Like there are there are some days for me when I'm communicating with people, like mm -hmm. doing re outreach and, mm -hmm. and just getting a lot, of, like I'll, I will have five different programs open mm -hmm. and I'll be using all of them, you know, not at the exact same time, but I'll be multitasking like mm -hmm. that. And it's effective to a degree because mm -hmm. I need all of those things to keep the conversations going. And I'm like, I don't want this, I don't want to be doing this all day, right. but I'll do it for three hours. Oh, three hours sounds like a long time. It is a long time. But when you're in it again, like you're just like, whoa, is, you know, are like you you're burnt? In the flow. Is that why you forgot my hoodie? <laughs> that I wasn't even doing that today. That's another topic. We'll get to that. Um, that was yesterday I was doing mm -hmm. this. And uh, and it's, it's you know, I can manage a, a few hours, like the three, three is definitely the outer seems, end of that. Yeah. You know, typically mm -hmm. I 
I keep that to about two hours. It's effective because I'm really in the flow, but it is amazing like what you can get done in that two hours. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but you have to create kind of a flow out of it. Okay. And you got to go back. It's a system. It, it, kind of, but it's like it's a little bit chaotic just because... Mm-hmm you know, other people are communicating with you. Right. So the, the what I've found is that I need to go back at either at the end of that session or uh, an hour or two later to go make sure I got everything down. Oh, okay. Because mm-hmm. when you're in that flow, it's so easy to miss a little right. detail here right. or there. And then, and now you're missing pieces mm-hmm. of it. Mm-hmm. This is really good. I, I want to translate this because somebody else posted under a thread about, the noise, because, you know, I mentioned there's a lot of noise out there and she's like, it's beautiful student. She does a couple of hour trainings and courses and she's like, oh, there was this thing I was looking at. It looked really good. There were 20 speakers. What do you think? And I was like, girl, you have gold. Like you've done energy mastery. You are in my prosperity course. Like why open up your realm to 20 other speakers that are going to be throwing a lot of noise? You don't even know their teachings. I'm so glad you brought this and up. And she's like, that's exactly the intuitive hit I was getting. Yeah, I almost forgot about this. Mm-hmm. Such a great example. And it comes back to, in my mind, mm-hmm. um, this is where a lot of people get derailed and stuck in the mud. Right. Is... You've got something right in front of you. Oh, yeah, right You've there. You've literally got the answer and the tools right in front of you. And then we just get drawn into somebody else's thing. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's a cool message that we kind of connected with, or it's a, you know, a personality that was very, uh, you know, very charming that, that kind of drew mm-hmm. us into that. And then we're off of our thing. Right. And we're in some other thing, somebody else's other thing that isn't going to get us where we want to go. Yeah. And and that's like death. Right. Man, it's so frustrating right. because all the stuff that this, I see this a lot with entrepreneurs actually, is all the stuff that was working. Yes. Now stops working. Because you're not paying attention to it. Breaks things. Right. And And then one ignores the very goal they had right in front of them. Exactly. And then and then it's funny how the mind comes back and is like, oh, that's that didn't work. (laughs) But that was the one thing that did work. And then you stopped. Yeah. And that's something that a lot of people do is like, oh, that's that things are working now. Great. I think I'll stop. <laughs> yeah. Avoid stopping when things are working, people. Keep it going. <laughs> it's actually what you want to continue to do. Interesting, right? Yeah, very, very. Mm-hmm. It's, it's really fascinating. The human mind, you know, we talk about this a lot. The human mind is an energy force. But think about energy and and the beauty of this. So when you take an energy force that's so exquisite is the human mind, but you start to fracture it off into different directions and send the thoughts and the energetic loops out and not close them, that beautiful energy force gets dissipated. Exactly. And then yeah. what happens? People create confusion. Um, they get into a need to be right that they don't know or they can't do it. And physically they will get tired because they're trying to make up for it all by exerting themselves in other ways or, you know, taking in too much caffeine or too much sugar, whatever. It just becomes a whole big fat ball of mess. Right. It, it, It just is a downward spiral that continues to drain energy and create more and more and more chaos. So less things get done, um, more and more anxiety builds up because when you've got all those open things, that's one that I experienced when I've got way too much stuff going on. I'm like, man, I'm like definitely feeling some anxiety. Like, what about this? I got to get this done. I got to get this done. I know I'm forgetting Mm -hmm. something, you know, it's something like that. And then it's like, oh man, like that's where it kind of got to come back. Okay. Where's the list? You know, like what's the priority? And then focus on that thing right. that, you know, that you know is going to get you to your next place before you get off into some other thing or some other area. Right. So let's look at what are a couple of tips that everyone listening can do to not be distracted, to close these loops and really get focused. My biggest one is time blocking. Oh yeah, for sure. You know, that's really helpful 
for me. I know. Well, those of you who have listened to our episode with Wes Schaefer, he was really great about that. When I worked with him is like every 15 minutes, you got to know what you're doing. It's yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's right. <laughs> and it's so, it seems kind of almost like, I don't know how long this has been around. This concept has been around, but it seems kind of old school yet. It is incredibly effective. Mm-hmm. And, it, but the reason that it can be hard for people is because it requires that the mind to be disciplined enough to actually hold to it. Hold to it. So that to me would be another tip and tool. Everyone is be committed. Like anything, you know, if you're changing a pattern and definitely a pattern that your little self or your subconscious doesn't want you to switch, it can feel like there's resistance. Breathe through it, get to it, really commit And you will then begin to feel accomplished, right? You'll begin to have this new way of learning to be present, to really focus on what is right at hand. Yeah. Uh, Another tool, another trick for it that is super helpful for me is uh, breathing. I wanted you to mention that. that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, that, that six, three breathing pattern that we taught in the free, the free videos, um, I don't know if they're on this page or you'll not find right them. now, but yeah. describe the six, three breathing. So it's really simple, uh, super like ridiculously simple mm-hmm. is you put the tip of the tongue at the roof of the mouth and then you breathe in and out through your nose. You breathe in for six counts, four, five, six, and then you hold for three, two, three, which is important out for six, two, out through the nose and then hold for three. And you just keep doing that. Yeah. So it's a six, three, six, um, in for six, hold for three, out for six, hold for three. Um, you want to keep the tip of the tongue at the roof of the mouth just gently and then breathe in and out through your nose throughout. And it is ridiculous how much that helps. It really, it contains your energy, right? It calms one it really beautifully. You can do this in traffic jams. You can do this while you're walking or thinking, especially you do it a lot in front of your computer, right? Uh, yeah. Well, mm-hmm. it's the, one of the first things I do when I sit down in front of the computer is stop breathing. Yeah. A lot I look of at the thing, do. you know, and it's like, mm-hmm. you're, you're, it's all this head and mental mm-hmm. space and you're really in that. And then you're kind of out of your body. And so then your body's right. sort of breathing because, you know, you're not dead, but um, it's not really It's not really open and flowing and that's the energy that you want to really keep moving. Exactly. So as far as like keeping yourself focused, um, adding that into it will really help you to continue to focus on the task at hand. We'll add that link in the show notes. So link to the 6-3 breathing and the cord cutting and the grounding. Yeah. And well, that was going to be my next Mm -hmm. one is uh, cord cutting. Yeah. You know, when you're done with a task. Oh, cut. Cut the cords. Be done with that task. And then you're done. Mm -hmm. You're done. Close the computer, take a break. With conversations too. I mean, remember everyone, like a conversation with another human is a task. And if it's an awkward conversation, if it's a heated conversation, contentious, 6-3 breathing keeps you calm and just in your own stuff, not taking on theirs and definitely cutting cords so you don't walk away with their stuff and you don't give your stuff to them. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just, it's keeping everything clean and clear and it helps. Clean and clear. It helps to make those transitions without grinding the gears. Yeah. Right. So you finish one task. I'm definitely guilty of this one. I have to really watch myself is like, I finished this one task. And then it's like right on to the next thing because mm-hmm. like, I want to get to it. You know, <laughs> like I get excited and, um, but then I'm in that thing and then I was like, oh, and then I should have done this oh, and I go back to the should've. other thing. Right. You know, yeah. oh, but I forgot to do that. And then I'm back in that other thing. Oh. And, and then before I know it, I'm Deadly. multitasking. Deadly. But what I found is that when I just cut the cords, like so ridiculously simple, it's yeah. just cut the cords when I'm done and get up and like move around, <laughs> move, change gears. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, all of a sudden I can sit down and do that right. next thing just so much more easily and more effectively. I love that. I'm going to include one more tip. Be aware of your words Ooh. because the words, again, like when we're listening to our own words, there's a couple things we'll notice if we're throwing words out to other people, if we're blaming other people, if we're pointing the finger at the world, we'll notice if we are not completing sentences, kind of jumping back and forth from this thought to that thought and not completing a sentence. That is going to tire the brain so much. So really listen. This is a great, like just some homework for the week. Everyone is listen to your words. Are you completing sentences? Are you using words like should, 
um, good, bad, right, wrong, like avoid those words. In fact, what we'll do as well in the show notes is include a link to a mini training I'm doing, which will be happening tomorrow, but we can post it on the show notes, just about words and thoughts. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. And then the last thing I want to just kind of throw a little, little monkey wrench in here is something, oh something to think about over the long term. Um, that single pointed focus will really ultimately get you where you want to go. Mm -hmm. So that's like not multitasking, you know, in the life scale of like kind of what we talked about of going in a million different directions with things. That being said, focusing on that one thing to the exclusion of all else or at the cost of all else. Okay. Got it. Can create another kind of a vortex (laughs) that you kind of want to watch out for. Uh, you know, it showed up in a little way with the hoodie for me. It was like, I was so focused on that thing that I just had totally forgot that the Mm -hmm. hoodie, you know, Mm -hmm. it was even Mm kind of present in my mind, but just not quite through the surface to get there. And so when people do this, this happens in a broader, um, uh, in a broader way where it's like, you're so like, say in your business, like you're so focused on this one area and then there's like all these other little areas. Forget about your clients apart. or emails or whatever. That's right. a really good point, which is why time management is so important. Time right. Working. So it's it's kind of like when you think about single pointed focus, it's it's it, if single pointed focus in your life is task oriented, you have a problem. It's got to be ideal oriented. Yes, vision oriented. That's such a great point. The single pointed focus is reaching your ideal. Um, it is not being obsessed with a task to the exclusion of all else. You just, you can't Mm -hmm. do that because so many other areas of your life are going to suffer with. If you're so focused on your work that your family is suffering and you're just like totally oblivious to that, that's a major problem. Yeah, right. And I get that things do, there is no such thing as that balance, you know, Mm -hmm. things do go to one side and the other. But at the end of the day, like you, you kind of got to have, all of those things in there because they're all part of that vision, that ideal. Right. right. And if you lose sight of that, mm-hmm. you know, you're going to spin out real fast. Yeah, exactly. So I think, I just think that's important. That's kind of, it's a wanna, great, great monkey wrench there. Yeah. Kind of bring that in <laughs> at the very end. <laughs> so love to hear from you guys, um, your stories about getting distracted from action and what you're going to do in terms of creating more presence to the, to the present moment. Yeah. What little, I'd love to hear what other little hacks people Mm -hmm. have. Um, so hopefully those were, those were some, uh, helpful for everybody. But if you have some simple hacks, like I would love to hear them, you know, and see what the community has to say. Like, I'd love to share that, you know, with, uh, with other people too. Yeah. Put underneath the show notes. There's a little place for comments and until next week, much love. Namaste. Hey, thanks for jamming with us today. And if you enjoy Illumination Podcast, please go ahead and share it with someone you love. Give us a rating, review, download our podcast. And remember, you can find us at illuminationacademy.net forward slash podcasts. Talk to you soon. Namaste. Namaste.